I got home from school the other day and was just hanging out of my room and messaging my friend Cora. She's pretty cool, and she knows more about computers than just about anyone I know. Julian, stop playing on your computer and do your homework. All right, I'm almost done. Working on a PowerPoint presentation for science class. What's it about? Farming. Cool. Cool? Yeah, I do farm reports all the time. Get out of here. My uncle Vince is a farmer. Cora! Come downstairs for dinner! Gotta run, parents. LOL. Help me later with Farming 411. Later. Later. Hmm, I wonder if my Uncle Vince can help out. Uncle, need 411 again on farming. Oh, an instant message from Cora. Uncle Vince is online. Ask him a question. Here's his I am name. Great. What does the term biotechnology mean? Good question. Using science to help improve farming. Improve? Uh, how? Try this website link. A university researcher can give you a better definition. If you went to the dictionary and looked up biotechnology, you'd find that biotechnology is the use of living systems for applied outcomes. That is doing engineering or industrial jobs or agricultural jobs with things that are alive, be that you know, microbes, plants, animals. So it's a very broad definition. For many, many years, people have been crossing plants and looking at the traits and selecting the ones that, for whatever reasons, grow better, grow faster, produce more protein. Farmers, whether they were planting corn or soybeans, cotton or oats or wheat, they have for years, going back hundreds of years, have selected the best of the best and have saved those seeds to be able to plant them for their next crop. In the broad sense, the Native Americans were doing biotechnology. They were taking a living organism and applying it to particular uses for, for their purpose. Sort of the selection for different types, though probably driven by more ceremonial or, or sort of territorial reasons, was an early application of the methods of genetics and, and biotechnology. From weed-free soybeans and corn resistant to insect damage, to foods that yield greater nutrition and even crops in which medicines are grown, biotechnology is being applied and developed on land whose settlers didn't even dream of such a science. This used to be a frontier. People came here to farm and, and created America as they moved west by plowing the land. This was an important part of the success story of agriculture in this country. Wow, biotechnology has been going on for a long time. Cora's uncle sent me another link he thought would be helpful. The European Corn Borer does millions of dollars in damage by burrowing through corn stalks and other plant stems. Today, biotechnology makes it possible for farmers to grow corn without interference from the pest. Soybean growers can spray weeds without harming the soybean plants. Primarily, the, the first biotech seeds that have been available on the market are herbicide-resistant seeds. Uh, the soybeans you see in the distance behind me are herbicide tolerant, primarily they're Roundup ready uh, soybean seeds. Roundup is a brand of herbicide that's important to soybean growers because it keeps weeds out of soybean fields. However, it would kill soybeans that do not contain the Roundup resistant gene. One of the things that we've found about these herbicide tolerant soybeans is, is that we can count on a good uh, a crop that has no weeds in it or very few weeds, 
and we can count on that working year in and year out. With Roundup Ready Soybeans, we'll be able to provide a much uh, higher quality product for our end buyers, both here domestically and overseas. Cora, thanks for helping me with my science project. Oh, it's fun editing video. I've got some friends who might want to help out too. You're a lifesaver. You seem to know a lot about farming. Well, biotechnology and farming is nothing new. I've done a ton of projects on farming for school, and even just hanging around with my uncle on the farm is cool. Hey, check out this video clip I just put together last night. Very close to the biotechnology horizon are common everyday crops, like corn and tomatoes, grown with very specific applications. Biotechnology could modify one specific gene and change that and then put it back in the plant to make or tweak that particular trait. It could add one new protein, it could add one resistance gene to a pathogen, or it could change the property of the oil to make new uses from those products. We would like to be able to develop corn that is more efficient for ethanol production, that is more efficient for animal feeding, that is in general nutritionally enhanced so that there's benefits to the animals and humans that consume the corn. And we're already seeing research in the area of using biotechnology to enhance the ability of, say, corn to be processed into ethanol as an alternative energy source, or soybeans into biodiesel fuel. It is the starch content that makes it possible to process corn into ethanol, which can be used much like gasoline. Ethanol, from genetically enhanced corn, can be used in many forms of transportation, such as the Vanguard Squadron Acrobatic Flying Team. Just as, say, the Native Americans were trying to select for different properties of color, we're trying to alter genes that influence the starch quality, the amount, the same for proteins, how many different types of proteins, how much protein is present, and what types are there. Wow, that was great. It was really good. You know, it's interesting all the things you can do with corn. Does your uncle know a lot about it? Oh, a little bit. But besides corn, what have you found that biotechnology offers us? Funny you should ask. Here's a second clip I completed. Check this out, it is so totally cool. One of the most exciting and promising things about biotechnology is the ability to grow crops that have a direct beneficial impact on people's health. There'll be the interface between agriculture and medicine where we're using crops to produce medicine and that maybe would be used in a therapeutic sense. Those kinds of modifications to make healthier foods and more health protective foods are within reach of biotechnology. The corn that we're growing this year is our second crop of what's called pharmaceutical corn for cystic fibrosis patients. This is the first of many coming in the near future, and these are therapeutics that will be grown in ordinary crops for people with a variety of diseases. Because of its use in medicine, pharmaceutical corn is under the same careful scrutiny and regulation as other medicines. Bill Horn and his brother Joe, along with a French pharmaceutical company, are growing corn that is part of clinical trials with young people suffering from cystic fibrosis. Yes, right now there are 11 patients in London, England that are taking this therapy and having very, very good results. So we're very excited and we're very encouraged. Next year we will start with phase three clinical trials and that will be 600 patients. Because the corn is used to produce medicine, it's grown, harvested, and stored separately from other crops. Hopefully in the future, after we get through the clinical studies and all the trials that need to be done through the U.S. government and the French government, it will be used to benefit and enhance the life of cystic fibrosis patients. These kinds of plant-based therapeutics are going to improve the general health of people around the planet in virtually every country because they're affordable, they're safe, and they're easy to produce. These kinds of therapies are going to change medicine forever. The change is not only to the medicine, Increasing use of medicines delivered through crops could also lead to changing an often used term. We will be using farming, and in this case, not F-A-R-M-I-N-G, but we will use it as P-H-A-R-M-I-N-G, as a pharmaceutical enterprise. And so agriculture 
will have a new dimension for essentially producing human vaccines or animal vaccines or other important medicinal products. These vaccines will eventually be administered through a very common food. Although kept separate from the rest of the food supply. I thought, what can we add to the apple that can allow to truly promote health? And that's when I thought, hmm, why don't we use the apple to produce and deliver a vaccine? The proverb states, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That same advice applies to other fruits and vegetables. What makes a tomato red is lycopene, which, it turns out, helps to keep people healthy too. It's a pigment that plants produce as a protectant against the harmful rays of sun. And in animals, it's a, a antioxidant. So it serves to protect our metabolism against the harmful effects of oxygen. Purdue University scientists have discovered a way to increase the level of lycopene in tomatoes through biotechnology. It's equivalent to what consumers eat every day in the form of a tomato, the only difference being that it's elevated in the level of lycopene, which is a natural food ingredient to begin with. Lycopene is known to serve as a chemoprotectant from a number of cancers, uh, skin cancer and prostate cancer being big ones. And the more consumers relate products to fighting diseases like cancer, the better off we'll be as a society because we'll have a healthier population and reduce the cost of health care in this country. Lycopene is available in a packaged supplement form at health food stores. But it's important to remember that the best sources of lycopene are plants. If you take a lycopene pill, you're just taking lycopene. If you eat a tomato, you're getting lycopene and a lot of other things. And apparently a few of those other things aid in the absorption of the nutrient. The product from a plant, a natural product, synthesized by the plant, is what the body needs. And we've not figured out a good way to manufacture it the way plants do. Hey, Uncle Vince is online. Hey, Uncle Vince, it's Julian. Julian, how's your project coming along? Finding out this biotech stuff makes me think there must be more possible through biotechnology. Like, hmm, a better skateboard. Sounds to me like you're speaking of materials made from biotech crops. Really? Like what? I'll send you some tapes I have. Just be sure I get them back. There are efforts to engineer plants to produce these things in a more efficient, economical way and in a renewable way so that you could envision the day where we want to make a whole bunch of a type of plastic, well then you grow a crop of say corn to get the raw material that you would use to make that plastic. Spire silk protein is being produced in milk and then they collect the milk and then they can actually make silk threads out of, out of you know, shearing the, the milk proteins. And it produces an incredibly strong and lightweight material. The military is extremely interested in it. most of the police forces are. It's kind of like you know, the next wave in terms of, of protective uniforms. Because biotechnology is an emerging science, it is constantly studied and scrutinized. It shows great promise, but there are those who are skeptical of biotechnology. Scientific study is constantly addressing these concerns. The possibilities of biotechnology increase as more study is done of the genetic makeup of humans and animals. Greater understanding can mean benefits to people, animals, and the environment. There's the growing realization that biotechnology can be applied to many, many different uh, problems that we face, not only in agriculture, but in medicine and a variety of other areas. The tools that we have are ability to look at the genetic blueprint of an individual animal and to understand what kind of nutrients would maximize its ability to grow and to be healthy. Understanding the genetic makeup and how that affects the behavior of cattle or mice or dogs or cats 
has a tremendous amount of information that can be used to, to cure human diseases too. What genomics allows us to do is ask some more fundamental questions about how what we eat affects our health, how what we eat will affect our behavior, how what we eat can affect our ability to, uh, to learn or grow. We're asking the same questions of animals that we are of humans now, and that's the beauty of genomics. And as I say, understanding that and coming up with products that can serve animals will also be able to serve humans and vice versa. All humans have certain minimum needs for vitamins and not everyone is getting those minimum requirements. So if we can increase it in the food supply, there may be better general health. Yesterday in social studies, I heard that the world population would really be increasing over the next several years. I wonder if biotechnology will help to grow enough food for all the extra people. You've got biotech on the brain. Time for more research. The only way to provide enough food for 9 billion people is to get more productivity out of the land that we do farm. And we're not going to be able to do that without using every kind of tool at our disposal. That's why we try to use biotechnology. I think the greatest humanitarian part of biotechnology is that it can create a uh, food supply for an ever-increasing world population. But the ability to produce an affordable, healthy food supply will rely heavily worldwide on biotechnology in years to come. And so what we've been doing in the last 20 years is just adding one more tool in the toolbox. It's like building a house with a power drill versus a screwdriver. Today we have the most efficient, versatile food production system the world has ever seen. You go to the grocery store and basically you can get almost anything you would like from all over the world. It's all very healthy and safe and that will continue and biotechnology will help be a part of curing that quality and quantity of food for the future. Hey, how's it going Jules? Finished the last two video clips last night. I can't wait to see them. One of the things, okay. One of the many things I learned is I'm going to start studying biology more to understand all this. Hey, check this out. It's a quick one. We don't understand necessarily how computers work either, but yet almost all of us use them and find a way to make our lives better. And I think biotechnology will be the same way. We don't necessarily have to understand all the details. We just need to pay attention to the potential benefits and then also make sure that the technology is used appropriately. It's important to point out that we as scientists, we feel a strong responsibility towards ourselves as human beings, as members of the human race, and towards everybody else around us in using this technology in a responsible manner. So our goal is to improve human life. You know, the more I learn about biotechnology, the more questions I have. And the more interesting it is. You know, I think I'll work in that field someday. Worst case, you'll make a great video editor. Nah. Genetics basically impacts all parts of life and living species. So whether you're dealing with animals, with plants, with humans, with microbes, with the environment. Genetics plays an incredibly critical role. And so the field of discovery, which is the most exciting part about being a scientist, is just an incredible driving force for anyone who's excited about science and anyone who's excited about being creative. If you think about the past 50 years, much of science was driven by the splitting of the atom, the physical sciences things like physics and astronomy. It's been said that the next 25 years, the new millennium, will be driven by the age of biology. The ability to use biology and use plants and microbes and animals to create new products and new value is very exciting. Well, that's it. I'm finished. You did a great job. I'll have to stop by your class when you make your presentation. 
Hey, look, Uncle Vince is online. Oh. Uh, thanks for all your help. Perhaps I'll work in this field someday. This field? If you want some first-hand experience, I've got a bunch of fields. Come out this weekend. Bring your boots and a shovel and my videotape. 